Hello, in this video we're going to look at the economics of imports. A country will import a good if it does not, if it does not have a comparative advantage in the production of that good. U.S. consumers will import foreign-made tennis shoes because foreign firms produce tennis shoes at a lower opportunity cost than domestic producers. If the U.S. doesn't allow trade in tennis shoes, the domestic price of U.S. tennis shoes will be greater than the world price. Because the foreign firms can produce tennis shoes at a lower opportunity cost than domestic firms, the world price of tennis shoes will be less than the U.S. price. If the U.S. allows trade in tennis shoes, U.S. domestic consumers will import tennis shoes. In the U.S. market, the price of tennis shoes will now decrease to the world price. Because domestic consumers can buy as many pairs of tennis shoes as they want at the going world market price, they will no longer buy tennis shoes at the inflated domestic price. Domestic firms will have to lower their price to the world price in order to stay competitive. Domestic consumers will now pay the world price. Domestic, con domestic firms will now have to charge the world price. So the domestic price becomes a world price with trade. The winners and losers, domestic firms lose by allowing trade and imports. They face more competition and sell less at a lower price. Domestic consumers gain by paying a lower price and buying more, in this case buying more tennis shoes. Overall, the gains to the domestic consumers will outweigh the losses to domestic firms. So here is uh, the domestic market. We have a demand for this good in the domestic market and the supply. And we're going to first look at the situation before trade, before import trade. The price, the equilibrium price is $5 a unit and the equilibrium quantity is 5 Consumer surplus equals area A. It is just the height of the demand curve, which reflects maximum willingness to pay, uh, and the difference between the market price. So we have this triangle here representing consumer surplus. Producer surplus is the difference between the market price $5 and the supply curve. Again, we're ignoring the world price right now. We're not trading. So the difference between the market price $5 and the supply curve all the way up to that fifth unit. So we have another triangle here given by area B and C. So this big triangle here consisting of areas B and C. The total surplus is consumer surplus plus producer surplus and that's area A, B, and C. Now let's look at the situation with trade. With trade the domestic price will now equal the world price. So what is relevant here is the $3 price per unit. We can ignore this $5 now. That's no longer being charged in the market. Domestic uh, sellers have to sell their product at the going world price to stay competitive. So domestic consumers will buy seven units. So at a price of $3, we walk over to the demand curve and domestic consumers will purchase seven units. Domestic firms will sell now only three units. At a price of $3, we walk that over to the domestic supply curve and come down, and the quantity supplied is three. There is not a shortage here or excess demand. The difference between the demand and supply curve at the price of $3 represents imports. So domestic consumers import four of the seven units they buy from foreign firms. So the imports in this example is four. Just this distance, this horizontal distance between the demand and supply curve at the world price of $3. Another way we can think about it, imports will equal the quantity demanded by domestic consumers, which is seven, minus the quantity supplied by domestic firms, three. Consumer surplus. Okay, everything now in terms of our surplus measures is going to be based off of the world price of $3. So the difference between the height of the demand curve and the world price up to the last unit consumed, which is the seventh unit. So we have this big triangle here, A, B, and D, 
represents consumer surplus. Producer surplus is the difference between the world price and the domestic seller's supply curve all the way up to the last unit brought to the market, the third unit. So we just have this triangle down here uh, given by area C. Overall total surplus is now A plus B plus C plus D. So total surplus expanded because of allowing the importation of this good and that gain from trade here, the gains from trade in this example is going to be area D. Okay, before trade our surplus was just A, B, and C, our total surplus. Now it is A, B, C, and D where the difference is we have this additional area that is benefiting consumers. So another way, one other thing to think about here is that consumer surplus expanded by area B and D by allowing trade. Without trade, consumer surplus was just area A. Now it encompasses B and D. Producer surplus is just C. At one time, producer surplus was B and C. So producers lost area B, but that loss was pocketed by the consumers. All right, uh, moving on. Let's look at this uh, numerically. So before trade, consumer surplus is area A. If we were to calculate the area of that rectangle, one-half base times height, we get $12.50. Producer surplus is area B and C. If we were to calculate the area of that triangle, one-half base times height, so 5 minus 0 and 5 minus 0, we get $12.50. So total surplus is $25. So after import trade, consumer surplus is A, B, and D. Putting a numerical value on that, it's just going to be one-half base times height. So the dimensions of this triangle, we got 10 minus 3 and 7 minus 0. So we get $24.50. Producer surplus is just this tiny triangle down here given by the dimensions of 3 minus 0 and 3 minus 0 or $4.50. Total surplus is $29. The gains from trade are area D. We could calculate the area of that triangle, triangle D, and that is going to be $4. Got a, a height here, five minus, 5 minus 3 and a base of 7 minus 3. So the change in total surplus from trade with trade, it's $29 of total surplus. Without trade, we just showed it was $25. So the change in total surplus or the gains from trade are $4. Just another way of backing into the, the net benefits of trade here. All right, that's it. I hope you found this video helpful.